Hi guys, welcome back to another exciting tutorial where we tackle common layouts using Elementor. For today's challenge, we'll be looking at how to create the inverted border card where we have the border radius for the individual sides are outward, but then we have one area where the border radius is inward. This is a popular design trend and lots of people have tackled it in different ways, some of which are Kevin Powell, Kevin Geary, Frank Tillmans, Andrea and so many other people have tackled it in different ways. So today I'm going to show you how to design this layout using a slightly similar method. Some people have shown how to do it on the Elemental Facebook community, which is where I got the layout from. As you can see, a top contributor had come up with a layout which works. We can preview it. You see, this is the layout and it works. So I'm just going to be showing you a different method, which is a bit better to maintain and you can easily change from one area and everything changes everywhere. So now if you want to create a layout that is maintainable, then stick around and we'll see how it goes. So to begin the tutorial, the first thing you have to make sure is that you have Elementor installed. You don't need to have Elementor Pro. We'll not be using any Pro features, but you have to have under the Elementor settings and features, Ensure you have the grid container set to active and the flexbox container set to active as well because we'll be using those in our design. So let's look at the design we're going to be making. So we're going to be making this design and you notice that there's equal spaces in between the columns and the rows. And you also notice that the cards are like repeating so that's like a three column layout. To achieve this one, I'll be using the CSS grid. But one thing you notice that the image is a bit bigger than the text. So we can assume that it's like a two by three grid. So this will be two FR. Then this will be split into two. So it'll be one FR or 1.5 FR, 1.5 FR. And then for the rows, we can say this should take up just the height of the button. But then the other part should be taken up by whatever is left so that's one fr by auto now that we have had that let's go ahead and create our page go over to our pages create a new page and then i'll just call it inverted border and we'll start so first let's add in our section so we're just going to add in a new section and then into this section, I'll be going to drop in the grid. So let's go ahead and use the plus icon, then create a new grid. This will be the card wrapper. So for this grid, like I said, it will first set it to full width. Then the columns, the FR, use the pencil icon and say, we want it to be two FR, 1.5 FR, 1.5 fr for the rows the first one should take up as much space as possible which is one fr then the second one should be just equal to the height of the button so that's auto now that we have the layout set up let's now add in our child items so the plus icon again first we'll add in our image then we'll add in the heading Next is the text editor for the description and finally the button. So now we have all of these in. Let's go ahead and add in our image. The dark one, so it's easy to see the borders. So we have the image. Then under the style tab, I like to set it to be 100% width and height. So it takes up the entire space that is available to it. Then the next thing is the button. Let's edit the button. I just see. Then I'll give it an icon. Then I want it to expand to fill the entire space. So we use justified. Then I'll give it a color for the background. So let's just drop in this color. So we have our first thing done. Let's give it the border videos as well. 
just give it a high number so it can be rounded and that one's done so the next thing is to now start affecting the layout so if you see from the design the image takes up the two rows in the column same with the text editor takes up the two rows in that column then the other heading widget and the button they share the rest of the space so to do that we'll have to use custom css because elementor doesn't allow you to edit the child grid items so we have to use custom css for that but before we do that i like to use class names for my css i don't like relying on the selector i like to use class names to make it more organized so for that we'll be using kind of the bem naming methodology what does bem mean it means block element and then modifier so first we take up like a card we call that the block then everything within that card like this we have the image is within this grid which is the block every element is the element and then if we want to maybe modify some of the parameters then we use a modifier tag like double hyphen so first we start with the block which is the grid go on the advanced tab the css classes we just give it the name of dd inverted card so then that's the block name so for each individual element within the block we just give it that same name and then just add a double underscore and then the name of the element which is an image in this case then the second one is the heading so advanced tab css classes double underscore and this time we say heading the next is the text editor so advanced css classes double underscore now we just say maybe description to make it short and for the button most times people name that as a separate component but for this i'll just use it as part of the bem naming so just say on double underscore btn so now we have named everything we can now start styling it to style it if you have elementor pro you can just go back to the grid under the advanced tab custom css you can add in your style there but if you have elementor free you have to use something else you can use your code snippets plugin you can use your child theme or whatever you feel comfortable using i'll be using an html widget to make it easy so the plus icon i'm just going to add in an html widget then within this html widget i'll just add in our style So to begin, first I will put in all the names here so that it's easy to start adding the custom CSS rules. So first start with the card. Then we put in the image, which is the first element. Then the heading, which is the next element, and so on. So now that we have these all set in place, let's make this widget to span the entire row so how do we do that all we have to say is on the image itself just say grid row start at the first row and then finish at the first row from the bottom so that's minus one and that's it it's now spanning the entire row so i start at the first row finish at the first row from the bottom so that's why it's a minus we'll do the same thing for the text editor which is the description you see grid row start at the first finish at the bottom but you notice that because we've added some property to it it now goes to the second rather than staying at the third so we have to now make it go back to the third column you now have to go back and say grid column should start at this is first, second column, and then the third column. So start at the third column. We can now start adding in our properties, which is our border radius and the rest. But one thing you notice if we go back to the design is that for all of them, they all share the same border radius. They share the same padding and the same gap. So rather than having to declare all these values multiple times, you can just write in a css variable and then 
just reference that variable everywhere. The benefit of doing that is that whenever you want to change any of those values, you change it from one variable and the changes reflect everywhere. So let's see how it is in action. So we go to the card itself and then we'll declare some locally scoped variables. So start with the padding. I'll give it a one rem padding. Then the gap, I'll say 20, maybe 25 pixels. We'll change all these values later. Then the border radius. I'll say maybe 1.5 rem and then the color. I'll say maybe Alice blue. To make sure that it doesn't conflict, I'll just add in some prefixes to each of them. So I'll just use DD. So yeah, that we have it. Now we can now start using these CSS variables in all the different elements. So we'll start with the image. So go to the image, the style tab. We've set this to, let's change the object fit to cover. Then the border radius, change it from pixel. We use the pencil icon. And now we just reference that CSS variable, which is DD um, radius, so that's rad. Immediately it reflects. The next thing we want to do is maybe so we can see it clearly. We add in the background color next to the widgets. So for the heading, advanced tab, background, the background type. Unfortunately, there's no way to add in CSS variables. There's no pencil icon here. So we'll have to do it directly from the custom CSS. So we'll go back to the custom CSS. We'll now add in our background color and we we'll reference that CSS variable again so you see immediately we get that color we'll do the same thing for the description and we get the color immediately for now it might be hard to see so let me just change the color from Alice blue this is where the benefit is. You can now change the color in one place and it reflects everywhere. So now let's add the color. You notice the color changes everywhere because we just change it in one place. That's why we like using custom CSS variables. For now, you see that there's a space in between with the grid. You cannot determine which one doesn't have a space. Once you set a grid gap to one area, it sets it to every individual area. But we can use a CSS trick which Kevin Powell taught and that is by using box shadow. So all we have to do is set the box shadow which has the same color as the background color and then we just have to offset it to fill in the other gap. Normally we can just go to the heading widget, advanced tab, border, box shadow and then we just have to set the blur to zero and then when we start adjusting the horizontal, watch what happens, it immediately covers the space. But unfortunately, we cannot add custom variables here. So that's another limitation. So to do this, we don't want to be setting fixed values. We want to be able to adjust everything from one area and it changes in our design so that we don't have to stress ourselves too much. So get rid of this and then go back to our custom CSS. And this time the heading widget, we want to add in our box shadow. So box shadow, you said the horizontal should be the same as the space in between. So we'll say var, we we'll reference the gap. Then the vertical should be zero. The blur zero, the spread zero. And then the color should be the same as our background color. And there we have it. It has occupied that gap. So now we don't have any gap again if you minimize it. You see, there's no more gap. It looks like there is the space is filled up, but actually it is filled up by a box shadow. That's the good thing about box shadow. It doesn't interfere with the space, but it actually 
occupies like an imaginary space basically. So now that we have it that, we can now add in our padding to our widgets. So for the first widget, we just reference that padding value. So over, or you can set in your own padding, but I just want everything to be changed from one location. Remember to put in the prefix. And then for the next widget, the same value, just so everything is consistent. So now we have that. The next thing we want to do now is to start adding in our border radiuses or radii. So to do that, we we'll reference the border radius that we chose. But rather than doing it on the widgets, I'll just make it to make it easy. I'll just do it directly on the CSS variable here. So we'll go to the heading widget. Then we we'll say border radius. We want to add the border radius to the top left and the bottom left only. The top right should be left at zero. So we we'll start clockwise. So that's the top left to have the radius. Let me just copy it. The next should be zero, zero, and then the bottom left should have it. So now we've done the first step. Same thing with the other one. We want top left zero, top right should be curved, bottom right and bottom left should all be curved for the description. So I'll just copy the border radius. And then change where it needs to be changed. So this should be zero. Then left, right that and then we want the final step to also be the radius. So now we have our design. Everything is almost perfect. The only thing now is the main problem, which is how to add this inverted border radius here. How do we do that? There are many ways we can do it. So many people have come up with different tricks, but I'll be using the one from Kevin Powell, which is using a radial gradient and it's quite easy to do. So I'll be combining that with using an absolutely positioned pseudo element and I'll be using the CSS grid area to position it to the place that I want. If that sounds all tough, don't worry, I'll break it down for you. So we'll first start with adding in our pseudo element. So the pseudo element will be, because this is the shorter one, so that will be on the heading. So let's go to the heading. We'll start by adding an after or a before pseudo element, either one will work. Whenever you're using a pseudo element, you have to first start by declaring a content. Otherwise, nothing we do there will work. Then I want it to be positioned absolutely. The next step, let's just give it a width and a height. The width and the height will be equal to the border radius. So you see, width should be var radius. The height should be the same. Let's just give it a background color so we can see it easily. So now it is positioned by this angle. Now we can now change the positioning using say right be zero, bottom zero. But Right now it's positioned here. So all we can do now is say we want it to go by the size of the gap to the right and to the bottom. But rather than doing this, I learned a new trick, which is using CSS grid with an absolutely positioned element. And then it helps you to position things easily. We want it to be positioned on this grid area instead. So what we'll do is we'll take away the relative positioning from the heading because Elementor always adds a position relative to every widget. Rather than it being positioned relative to the heading itself, we want it to be positioned to the CSS grid on the grid container. So all you have to do is first declare the parent as position static. 
then now it will be positioned relative to the parent container. Let's just make sure that it is. So I'll just give it a position relative on the card. So now that we have that, we want it to be positioned relative to this grid. So how do we do that? All we have to do is on this pseudo element, we come over and then we say grid column should be in between grid two and grid three. So that's two slash three. Then the row as well should be between, this is one, two, and three. So between th two and three as well. So grid row two slash three. So now all we have to do is rather than using, because now it's being positioned relative to this card. So all we have to do is rearrange it. So rather than write zero, we say write should be equal to the value of the gap. So that will be var. Or well, let's use a calc first. Calc minus one times the value of the gap. Then the bottom, rather than bottom, we say top should now be the same value. So calc minus one times the value of the gap. And now it is absolutely positioned correctly. So all we have to now do is get rid of this background and then add in a background image using the radial gradient background image. So let's add in the background image. And you see, now we're getting that shape that we want. All we have to do is now rearrange the shape. So we'll use the translate rotate property. So we'll rotate. We want it to rotate by 90 degrees. And you see, now we're having that shape. Now all we have to just do is hide that color. So rather than using red, we just hit transparent. And that's it. But one thing I forgot is to actually change the gap of the parent container to be equal to that value. That's why it's, it's not directly on the center. So all I have to do is go to the grid itself. Under the layout, I forgot to change the gap. So the gap should be referencing that custom variable we created. So var dd gap. So now you see it's now working properly because the size now is equal. So this is the size is equal to the size of this. So that you see the curve, everything works as expected. So now let's publish it and view it on the front end. You see, right away we get the equal spaces between them. That is the gap. And then we also have that curve. Everything is fully responsive. So if you go back to the layout and then go to your CSS sheet, you can change everything. So you can change the padding. If you want the padding to be bigger for each of the text, you can make it maybe a 0.5. If you want the gap, if it's maybe too big for you, you can go to the gap itself and say, maybe you want the gap to be rather than 25 pixels, you want it to be a one rem. The gap is working. If you want the radius to be smaller, so you get this one pixel radius or one rem radius, you want it to be 1.4 and so on and so forth. That changes. If you want to change the color as well, you can change the color and they will all change accordingly. The only thing you have to watch out for is that this can only go to a certain value. Anything higher than that value, then it will break. So watch what happens when you change the radius to maybe something too big, like 8. Everything breaks, basically, because the radius has become too, too small, so it all breaks the layout. So, but if the layout is within a certain a threshold, then everything will work well. You can do up to 2, and they will all still work perfectly. But when you start going to like four realms and all that is becoming too big, then it will break. So that's what you have to watch out for. Then finally, the last thing we have to think about is 
responsiveness because that is very important so let's look at it on the tablet view i think it's still okay so we don't change anything on the tablet view but on the mobile view everything breaks because we need everything to go back to one grid container but fortunately elemental has this bug that if you use uh, custom units it doesn't work out well on mobile so you have to go back and do it yourself so it sets it as one rather than one fr so first you have to set it to one fr and then the other one to auto then everything breaks because we set explicit grid item positioning so now we have to set everything back to auto so go to your css variable let's go to the bottom we didn't even need the button so we can get rid of that then all we have to do now is add in our media query so it will be for the mobile view so for this view we want all our classes to go back to having an auto grid so just say class i'm just targeting every element that has the same bem class name that's one beauty of when you're using bem you can just target everything every child that has the same name so we we'll say we want it to be dd inverted card so all children that have this name we want them to have a grid column of auto and a grid row of auto and that's it it's back to kind of normal let me reduce the radius a bit so the next step now is that we now have to start changing the border radius that's one benefit of doing it here we can change everything here so let's go to the border radius for this child that's the heading and the text and we also have to change the positioning of this uh, box shadow so let's start with the box shadow so the box shadow is on this element which is the heading so i'll just copy that So that's for the heading. The box shadow should be at the bottom, not at the left. So all we have to do is just change the positioning. So do this and then change that. And that's it. It's now changing the vertical rather than the horizontal. Then now we have to change the border radius for each of them. So for this same heading, See border radius. It's going to be only the top left and then top right. The other should be zero. So that is var that's for the top left and the top right. The others should be zero. Oh, I made a mistake. It's not radius, but radius. So now we have that. So the next one now is for the text editor. Same thing. You see the same border radius. This time with only the bottom left and bottom right so the first two are zero then the bottom left is and then the bottom right and let's close it So there we have it. We can 
also add maybe if you want to add padding to each of them you can also affect directly here say maybe you want to change the padding just change the variable here so for mobile maybe you want it to be one rem see now you can change each of them individually depending on the breakpoints so for the this breakpoint you can set it to be maybe two rem but for mobile breakpoints it will still remain as that one rem and everything adjusts accordingly first we'll also need to reduce the padding between the two elements because i think it's a bit too big to do that we just have to reduce the padding from the elements themselves so initially we set the padding to be all round so all we can just do is come back to this remove that unfortunately elemental now sets everything again so you just do the same first let's just put it together and then reference the padding again then just unlink it this time and then remove the bottom padding set it to zero so now that's called reduce that space you can do the same thing for the text editor widget first we we'll give everything to have the same padding then unlink it and this time we we'll remove the top padding and yeah now we have that kind of like they're now closer together and we can publish it and basically that's it you can also view it on the front end right now it's because the image is quite big so it's creating this much space but if you want you can use aspect ratio on the image so you can go back to the image then using the CSS again this time we want to target the image so we just say we're targeting the image itself not the div around the image so once we target that we can now see aspect ratio we can see maybe like a 5 by 4 and it gives you this shorter view basically that's just about it so you can see it on the front end now you see it's shorter so you can affect the image itself because the image is what is giving it the height if you want you can also give each of these widgets a fixed height and all that but basically yep that's just about it this is the example you can add in your hover color don't forget to add in hover color add in your text your description and all that and if you look at it it is responsive so as we go down it goes to the mobile view and then goes back and it's fully responsive there's no breakage you can choose where you want the button if you want the button to even be at the top because it's all using the css grid you can change the order or the position of every of these elements and they will all change accordingly and yeah that's about it I've taken up too much of your time, so I won't be showing the second method using without custom CSS. I will do that in a future video. So if you like this video, please leave a like, leave your comment. If you have a better method, leave it in the comment section below, and I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <music>